All right, it's now 29 minutes after 8. This is Morning Express, and we're into the last leg or the last segment of the show, and it is your money. And as usual, we like to take care of your money and make sure that you're financially intelligent. Now, joining me in studio to have that conversation is Steve Biko, who is a research analyst. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Let's start from analysis. And... It is a typical Kenyan thing. I was looking at a joke some time ago where they were saying that for every six Kenyans, four have a side hustle, even if they're employed. They have something they're doing on the side. And it's almost become part of our culture of having a side hustle. But a side hustles are not always the best way to go. But maybe from a research point of view, how many businesses actually get set up and possibly go past the five-year mark? Uh, last year, we had 400,000 businesses closing down. 400,000? Yes. Wow. Because of how the country was, the nature of uh, the business environment. And maybe to understand it in perspective, because maybe there were 5 million that were set up and 400,000 closed. Is 400,000 a big figure? For, for Kenya, yes. Because we have around um, 900 to a million businesses coming up every year. Wow. And... Um, only 10% will be able to make it beyond the three-year mark. So basically, the Kenyan business environment is becoming very tough mm -hmm. as the years go, go by. And that is why you, you're seeing that out of six Kenyans, four have side hustles. Mm -hmm. You can have your own business, you can own your own business, but you still have a side hustle on top of your main business. Your main because um, what Kenyans are trying to do is trying to plant seeds everywhere to be able to make it through the day. It's very challenging. Mm -hmm. and. Um, one of the biggest reasons is because we don't have guidance and we don't have mentorship. You know, it's easy to set up a business. In Kenya, it will take you two weeks to become a CEO. In Rwanda, it takes you six hours. But wow. becoming a CEO is one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, creating the substance around a CEO is the other aspect around it. Okay. Yes. And now when you say becoming a CEO in Kenya takes two weeks, that means basically setting up a company, having it registered, and there you are ready to trade. Yes, Legal. registration. I mean, first you have to reserve a name make sure it's there, pay for it, do the registration, uh, get the county business licenses and everything, get your bank account, you know, get your KRA documentation ready, then you're able to start mm. your business. Now, I, I believe research is uh, uh, something that is a gold uh, opportunity for us that we don't use and utilize effectively. But what does research tell us about setting up a business what are some of the things that you feel possibly need to be in place for us we, we you know the problem with kenyans is that we are afraid to pay professionals to guide us to do things mm -hmm. we, we don't really get professional help we normally get a lot of um, ideas to set up the business in bars or, or social media or, or friends that's why most of the times we fail what is important in setting up a business is first you need three key people no matter what, what is the cost. If you can't afford them, then have them on. not even do it. Uh, we all have friends. Mm -hmm. You'll rather call them and tell them, I, have, I need help. An accountant is very important. OK, so three things. Number one is friends. Uh, uh, what are the three? You to, say to, uh, the three key people that you need when you're setting up a business. Mm -hmm. One is an accountant. OK. The way carry is set up, the way the, the, the regu re regulatory system is set up in the country, you need an accountant to help you navigate through it. Uh, we see that um, as, we, as technology advances, CARE is actually digitizing its processes, making it easy to track people and every aspect of business that you're doing. So an accountant is very important because one, f cash flow is very important. And you need to understand that um, how you manage your business from the bank, from your client to the bank to you is very important. Two, you need a lawyer. Uh, we, uh, we've just had a segment here talking about lit litigation, litigation and, and, and arbitration. Uh, yeah. The Kenyan business is, is a minefield. So you need a lawyer to be able to guide you through contracts. My advice to anyone setting up a business is never do a contract, never do a supply, never do a deal, never do a transaction without a contract. Mm -hmm. Even if it's verbal, have it recorded. Isn't that taking us back to litigation? Because uh, uh, from experience, sometimes... The reason why I'm saying a lawyer is important, if you have someone to guide you through, you may not need to go to litigation. Mm. You, once you're able to have the process through and once you're able to understand your rights, this, and this applies to both the entrepreneur, the, both the owner of the business, and even, even the employee. Mm. If you understand the terms and conditions of what you're getting into, it makes it easy for you to be able to navigate it through. And if the challenges and the conflicts that arise, I know every contract will always have that clause that states, in case of a conflict, this, these are the steps we'll take. Mm. 
and if arbitration doesn't work, most contracts actually state arbitration is the first line of defense. Mm -hmm. If that fails, then litigation. So having a lawyer is actually very critical. And the third person that you need is a mentor. Mm -hmm. Reason is, um, for most entrepreneurs, when you make your first big deal, if it's your 10,000 mark or 100,000 mark or 1 million mark, it's normally very crazy. You want to go to Mombasa, you know. Enjoy a holiday. It's been tough, you know, I've had a long time, you know, struggling to get this first deal. Let me relax. A mentor will be able to guide you on how to handle your first success. Because, for example, for me, when I made my first million, it was very crazy. I didn't know what to do. You know, you've been struggling for a whole year to, you know, been hand, hand to mouth. You get a 5,000 deal, you get a 3,000 deal, then you get a 1 million deal. It changes the whole perspective of money. You know, you have debts accumulating on one end, but you, you've been suffering. You know, you've been delaying your gratification on, on a couple of things for a while. Mm. So you're left wondering, what do I do? A mentor will be able to guide you, will be able to help you understand. Did you have a mentor? I didn't have a mentor. Okay, so what did you do with your... It's taken me break? at least eight years to understand the things I'm telling you about the three people. I didn't have a mentor, so I failed. Okay. I failed five times to be and able to And sometimes I find that most success stories lack the failure aspect of it because we hide it. It's not easy to talk about failure. Uh, no one wants to associate with failure. That's why we never talk about it. Mm -hmm. We want to see the beautiful aspect of success. Mm -hmm. We want to see how, look, how good you look. But no one wants to look at the hard work that goes into it. Right. Failure has a connotation that you're not bright that you're not worth it. Failure means you don't have friends. Failure means that people will not be able to invite you into their networks. No one wants to invite someone who's failed. But I did fail pretty bad. And it's, it's, it, the fact that I didn't have a mentor, when you make your first deal, it becomes easy to fail. Uh, I didn't put back the money into the business. And, and that's why an accountant should have been very important for me, because I'll have known that once you get the money, first pay. Pay off your debtors. The first aspect is government statutory bills. Pay your taxes, if it's VAT, if it's corporate uh, uh, overall turnover tax, if it's uh, your revenue, county revenue bills, pay that one off first. Then pay your suppliers, pay your debts, pay your employees. And you're paying your employees that with the least paid one. Don't want the least in the company. Pay that one off first as you go up the ladder. The manager or the owner of the business will pay themselves last. Then once that is done, look at the other overheads internet, uh, fuel, books, rent. rent, everything. Once that's done, then whatever you remain, there's gross profit and then there's what you call net profit. Once you have the net profit, then ask yourself, do I have money to pay the salaries and pay the same things I've paid this month for the next six months? If you don't have the money for that, then you don't have net profit. Plow it back into the business for at least make your business sustainable for six months. And the three people can be able to guide you. A mentor will be able to tell you from their own perspective, it took me a while to be able to get a mentor who was a billionaire and, and he's been able to guide me through it. My accountant and my lab have been able to guide me through a lot of minefields. So it makes it easy to be able to do your business. Okay. And uh, to me, it sounds like the template you've given us is one that we're also told by financial advisors of a personal account whereby I should be able to run my life comfortably as it is right now with savings of at least, is it three months? Uh, yes, in other words, if months. today I had no income whatsoever. If you lost your in. job, you at least need to at least be able to survive for six months as you're looking six for, months. not three months, six months six as you're you able to look for another job. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this brings in the issue of uh, delaying your uh, gratification. That is very important. Having a budget whereby you're able to understand the critical aspect of your spending and the leisure aspect of it. And, and, and the, 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 the fourth aspect is savings come uh, uh, investments. Mm -hmm. As a country, uh, first, we've not nurtured or developed the culture of saving. We don't have enough disposable income for us to be able to save. So saving becomes a difficult aspect. But thanks to technology, things like you know, mobile money and, 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 and phones enable us to be able to save little money as little as, as 10 shillings well. as you go along. So at least we are now developing that aspect. But now the way our economy is currently is, uh, our savings are being eaten into by inflation the challenges that we're getting every day, you're seeing life actually increasing at 17% per month, becoming more expensive. So whatever little money you have, it's a problem. Healthcare is a challenge. We're having, inter we're having um, development of lifestyle diseases that were never there before. So actually these are eating into our savings and our investments. And directly or indirectly, in the sense that either it's a family person who's directly 
related to you or an extended person where every week you are attending a, a Harambe to be able to contribute. So saving or making investments have actually become a challenge. And actually, from research that we've been able to study and do the last uh, 18 months, it's been very, very difficult for Kenyans to save or even invest because they're trying to to survive. It's hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. And uh, school fees is actually becoming expensive. Uh, school, education, the cost of living has, has gone up. Yeah, it's it's gone actually up. gone up and since yet, 2013. Yet income doesn't go up since 2013, rate. it's gone up by 67%. Wow. That's so you do, you, you do realize that it becomes very difficult. So in terms of uh, running a business, it's the same thing as running a, your personal finance aspect. Mm -hmm. A budget is very important. And in the budget, you understand you have what you call the critical aspect mm -hmm. of it. Uh, and I'm looking at, um, for example, if I'm personal finance, I'm looking at if I pay rent, mm -hmm. how much is rent, mm -hmm. food, transport, healthcare. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at medicine, am I in a chama? I'm looking at uh, emergency, and then miscellaneous. You've got seven things that you need to factor in before you can look at now, I'm remaining with 10 or 20% of my salary. Do I invest it, do I save it? And if I'm going to invest, where am I going to invest? The challenge is most of the investment options are inter capital intensive. Right. So you're left with very minimal options in terms of investing. That's why you end up seeing people going to the bar to drink the money. Mm -hmm. Because 10,000, 20,000, you, you might realize it's very little to invest. Okay. But there are options. If Kenyans are willing to pay professionals to be able to do research for them, they'll mm -hmm. be able to find options, they'll be able to, to invest as little as 10,000 every month and be able to grow investment portfolio. All right, now we need to wrap up. Your advice to anybody who's thinking of starting a business where you've mentioned the three uh, main people that you need in your life of business, accountant, lawyer, and mentor. But here I am, in terms of ideas, we have ideas that come every day. And one thing that I must say that Kenyans do is try and duplicate. If quail business is working for you, I want to get everyone, into quail everyone business. Everyone will get into it. If uh, another business that comes in maybe of selling dollars or whatever, I want to get in there. How do I find an original niche for myself? The problem is not about ideas. Ideas will always be there. I don't think anyone currently can, 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 can. First, I don't think we lack any ideas. And two, I don't think I can say I'm the original originator of an idea. The challenge is how to execute the idea. That is where the game changes. The rubber meets the road. Execution of an idea is where the game changes. And the biggest challenge for someone who's able to start a business is always the beginning. Start. If you have a dream, I was, my mentor always tells me, if you have a dream, be prepared, be ready, and always remember that your plan will never materialize when you execute it. The plan changes the moment you start. So my advice is to anyone who's willing to, to, to who has an idea is start. start. Whether, whether you have the money or not, whether you don't, you, it's not always easy to see the complete picture. Start. If, if you can't afford a lawyer, a mentor, an accountant, get friends in your circle who can be able to advise you and tell you. Uh, in, the internet is a good resource whereby you can be able to do it yourself. Uh, I'm glad that Platforms like KRA, I mean, agencies like KRA and the state office are online. They can be able to guide you on how to do some of these things. So if you've got internet and you don't have these three people, you can be able to learn, you can be able to do it yourself as, as you're able to pick it up. So one is um, do, do a budget, understand what you have. If you have an idea, it's fine. Look, I mean, as you've put it, we are copycats. You start a shop, everyone, everyone on the street starts a shop. Mm -hmm. So you have an idea, don't worry that people will copy you. That's fine. What you need to do is ensure that no one can be able to duplicate your delivery or execution mode. Mm -hmm. Now, that is how you differentiate men and boys. All right. Thank you very much, Steve Biko. We'll have to wind up right there. Thank you very much for Thank sharing much. that valuable information. I'm sure that's information that some would charge for. But we've given it to you right here on Morning Express, free of charge. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you very much. Uh, for joining us this morning. It's now